I wanted to give a little bit of background on our team and uh, kind of how we got going uh, as a uh, uh, kickoff. And then I I'm doing the fewest slides here. I'm, I'm just sort of setting a frame for uh, the, the rest of the slides. With me are some of our uh, core architects. So as we go down through some of the uh, paths of what we've developed, you'll probably have a better interaction or more interesting if you want to ask them why they did cert things certain ways. So I'm going to get out of the way. Uh, but just to uh, sort of introduce at the high level and kick off, um, I was a founder of Data Domain, which many of you know from EMC. Uh, after uh, a couple of years there, um, a lot of the sort of core Data Domain team uh, peeled off. We were fortunate enough to kind of hang together a few of them uh, to start this effort. So uh, in, the, in the course of history of Data Domain, and they'll introduce themselves when they um, uh, present uh, with a little more background, but uh, Hugo Patterson will follow me, was our first chief architect and, and uh, first CTO. Uh, the following two CTOs are also in the room, uh, Cezala Reddy and Windsor Shu. Uh, so by uh, 2012, if you were collecting the Pokemon cards of the full set of uh, CTOs from Data Domain, they're all here. Um, also in the room, Boris Weissman was uh, a longtime uh, principal engineer at VMware. Um, uh, unfortunately, we didn't have Ganesh uh, Venkatachalam here, who was his partner for a lot of that run and uh, was another architect at, at uh, Datrium and couldn't make it today. Um, they'll go into a little more depth on uh, their story. So um, let me, let me uh, sort of jump into the slides. Do I have a clicker? I think I do. Um, broadly, we are doing two uh, sets of things. Uh, one is a different kind of infrastructure for private clouds with different building blocks to achieve uh, some things that you can't really get with other kinds of converged infrastructure. Uh, the second is a series of features for uh, data management broadly, uh, encryption, uh, snapshots and clones and replication and uh, policies for treating those for backup and DR and so on. Uh, there's a long list of features there. So uh, we've broken this into a couple of sections. Hugo is going to talk about the DVX, uh, our rack scale uh, uh, infrastructure and core uh, storage elements. Um, Windsor will talk about uh, blanket encryption, a new kind of uh, encryption to cover data that's uh, you know, during its whole life cycle in use in flight and at rest. Um, We've broken data cloud features into two sets. Cezala will cover uh, some of the core foundation, and Boris will cover uh, replication. And through the course of this, we'll try to break it up with demonstrations to show how easy it is to use. And that'll be led by Mike McLaughlin. So just a couple of quick slides. Uh, I've, I've mentioned a little bit about the team. Uh, our, uh, uh, we're funded by big well-known VCs like NEA and Lightspeed. We've raised 110 million over the course of a couple of rounds, 55 in uh, last December. So it's a well-funded, uh, very serious project. There are a lot of uh, really interesting and different technology elements. This is not a trivial presentation as you get into the detail. So uh, we've sp spent a lot of time with a lot of hi very high quality thought going into how we are doing this and uh, we hope you like it. Uh, we. Uh, in our first year, outsold a lot of the sort of uh, current well-known startups in this area. Uh, we're very proud of that. And the, the course of our trajectory just changed significantly with what we're calling our 2.0 release. Uh, this includes a lot of the data cloud and, and encryption elements. So uh, just by way of background, there are two fundamental changes that we're trying to, that sort of kicked us off. The first was a move toward convergence and away from specialty uh, hardware systems. And you can see that in the chart on the left. This is sort of the growth of converged revenue versus the uh, shrinkage of array revenue over the last couple of years. Uh, we don't believe that'll change fundamentally. The uh, array market seems to keep eroding. Uh, converged seems to keep growing. There are a lot of different ways to attack that. We've chosen a different kind of attack uh, that we believe is better suited to sort of rack scale deployments. Um, the, the challenge that we believe motivated that was 
uh, an interest, a, a little bit of interest in you know moving to commodities uh, in in hardware. Some of that was happening anyway, even in the array field. A lot of a lot of storage systems are fundamentally x86 systems. Mostly, it's about uh, sort of ease of deployment and and uh, ease of of operation. As time has gone on, more and more uh, operating uh, uh, capability is able to be performed by the VM administrator. And if, if that can be made more and more complete, people in uh, the rest of IT can do things that matter more. So we're trying to empower the VM administrator to do everything from uh, not, not just uh, storage and compute, but uh, data management. We came into the market just as the first generation of hyperconverged was coming out. And so we were able to talk to early customers and, and get some impressions of what was good and what was bad. Um, and it, you know, it's clearly a capable tool. It does a lot of things very well. Um, it's uh, proven that you know, in, in a lot of different cases. But when you talk to people who have a choice and ha who have different models, who are you know, considering uh, something like traditional converged or array-based uh, deployments versus hyperconverged, because you know, they could use either or both, they tend to focus hyperconverged to a couple of discrete cases. Um, and peeling it back, this tends to have a couple of uh, sort of resonant uh, uh, elements that, that cause that kind of discussion. Um, one is that uh, a lot of people fear a provisioning lock-in, that as, as you get started in that kind of deployment, all your eggs are in one basket from a vendor standpoint, from a, uh, an expansion standpoint. Um, some people are OK with that. Some people aren't. Performance and failure domains are kind of entangled. Um, we find, as you get a, a bigger and bigger cluster, we find a lot of uh, people un uncertain about the uh, predictability of latency, for example, because of the east-west traffic. Uh, <laughs> failure domains are sort of entangled. If, if you have a, a big you know, deployment, a couple of servers go down, well, that is your storage, too. So if you know, you have a, f a firmware update and you have to deal with a bunch of servers at once, um, there's some trickiness to making sure that you don't have to you know, rebuild the data or stop uh, operation. In encryption, generally speaking, there has been some gaps anyway. Hyperconverged is sort of like anybody else, like an array. It's mostly about data at rest. Um, as we talk to customers, they would like a lot more. So we took that seriously, and some, you know, you'll see some slides about that. And finally, data management is kind of spotty. Some vendors are kind of good at it in the hyperconverged space. Some don't even show up. Um, we believe that this has to converge. There has to be uh, uh, a, a way for VM administrators not to have to go to a separate uh, vendor pane to deal with what should be sort of core functionality in an infrastructure for private cloud.